Everybody here? Dan, I forgot to mention that 14-1, which is the tax assessments, hello, she hello? needs those uh, voted on tonight so okay. that we can get them out by the end of the month. So we'll all call that first and then we'll go through the year. Okay. Yeah, if, if possible. <laughs> Call to order the March 8th, 2023 agenda setting meeting for the Willow Hill School District. Ms. Hawthorne, please call. Ms. Lawson? Here. Mr. Belmont? Here. Ms. Reed? Here. Ms. Creech? Mr. Clanagan Bay? Here. Dr. McMillan? Here. Mr. Rensland? Here. Mrs. Orthrell? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, one four. Uh, we will be um, asking for acceptance of the February agenda setting meeting minutes. So moved. No, no. no, no. Oh, sorry. Next, next week we'll ask. I always do it wrong. <laughs> One five. Uh, we will be asking for acceptance of the February legislative meeting minutes. The board met in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss issues of uh, staffing and uh, student related issues. Anyone else? Presentations. We have <laughs> Edgewood <laughs> Elementary Spirit Awards.
Because he is a fifth grade student who comes to school every day and follows the five P's of Edgewood. He is always prepared, productive, prompt, polite, and proud. Above all of those, he is a true leader and role model in the school, especially to my first graders who love him. Darian is prepared. He comes to my classroom every day to check in with my first grade students. He greets them with a hug or words of encouragement for the day. He also facilitates a weekly community circle in my room and always has an appropriate question followed by an inspirational quote. Darian is productive. He uses his time in my classroom wisely. He mentors the students as well as encourages them to make good choices. He knows all of their names, their interests, and their personalities. He is prompt by making sure that he never misses his morning check-ins and afternoon check-outs. It has become a routine for himself and my students. His consistency has greatly impacted the behavior of my students and their faces show pure joy when he walks into the room. Every day, he shows my students politeness by the way he talks and interacts with them. Most importantly, Darian shows that he is a proud Wolverine by the way he conducts himself in his own classroom, the hallways, and the lunchroom. He knows that my first graders are always watching and looking for him, and he continuously shows them by example of a proud student. He has <coughs> given up his recess with his peers to come into my classroom and help my students on their academic needs. My students also have asked for their earned rewards to spend time with Darian. He has built so many positive relationships, one of my students said that they wanted to be him when they grow up. <laughs> he even celebrated his birthday in our room. I believe that Darian is deserving of this award because he is a true role model and he chooses to lead by example, and I am lucky to have him be an added addition to our first grade family. Wow. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Miss Satori is very extra. She's, her students made a video for him as well, but Darian would like to say something. <coughs> Thank you. So we have Dominic Davis. Dominique Davis. Is there a video? Yeah. Oh, there's a video. Oh, it's on video. Oh, I didn't. Okay. You got friends. Darian takes me on walks. Darian is the best 
because he followed the rules. <laughs> he helps me out a locker. <coughs> he comes up and do circles with us and talks to us while we're really sad. He's the great student. Darian deserves the Edgewood Elementary Spirit Over because he falls to five piece. Darian is the best picture ever because he follows the flat piece. He makes me smile. Darian deserves the award because he he is good and helps the fifth graders be good. <laughs> I like Darren because he comes up to play games with us. He makes me happy. He's the best brother. Darren is when Darian comes up and helps us. He do, he does a best circles with us. He is nice. He helps me every day. Darian is your card. You've got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead. All right. Uh, Dominique <laughs> Davis. Is he online? That's Roth. You see him online? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Mom. Best part of me. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a future teacher there. Yeah. yeah so. Congratulations. See you next See you Saturday. See you You see him online? Okay, Dominique. Mr. Davis, can you hear us? You're muted. Hello. There we are. How you doing? How you doing? Doing well. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I want to say first and foremost, I want to say thank you for the sponsorship for 2022 for the prom lineup. Um, this event was free for the students and families, provided music, pictures, and a safe environment and light refreshments for everyone. This will be the third annual prom lineup. Um, I love that Willow Hills noticed and decided to sponsor this event and would love if it would continue. I asked if possible if Willow Hills can sponsor this ongoing. The amount that was sponsored was 2,500, but things are getting more expensive. Um, I'm grateful for whatever donation is given and I'll let you guys discuss the number. I just wanna say thank you again. 
Thank you, Mr. Davis. If you could um, make a request by email that I could share with the board, and then we, okay. can, we can make a decision based upon that. Okay, and there's a video that I sent in just so you guys can see a little highlight of what happened last year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Also, the number of students it, or that, that actually participated in it will be good if you have something like that. I think it was, I, I can't even tell you how many students there was. We can probably get it from me. Is he playing it now or is it? I think he wants to play it now. Sure. Okay, why don't we, let's just move on to uh, Clara Katongo from Pittsburgh Tree. Thank you so much. I don't know where to stand. You're good. You're good. Right, right there. there. Yeah. Like where to look. So thank you. I'm from Tree Pittsburgh. My name is Clara Kitongo, and I would like to present about the One Tree Per Child program that's been in the district since 2021. And I see Mr. Belmont, we've worked a little bit with you. And I've also been working with Mr. Finney to do many site visits. So I just want to give a quick um, a summary of what we've been doing. We actually, Tree Pittsburgh got funding through the Allegheny County Clean Air Fund in 2020. And uh, this allowed us to go to five school districts. And one of those school districts was Woodland Hills. And we were able to, the grant allows us to plant up to 200 trees in the district. So between 2021 and 2022, not yet, we were able to plant in Wilkins, Edgewood, Turtle Creek, Dixon, Steam, and Woodland Hills High School with students uh, in the classroom. It was a wonderful experience. So I just want to present about what's going to happen in 2023. So uh, with Mr. Finney's lead, we're able to do a second set of site visits this year. And we, were, um, we went to Dixon, Steam, Turtle Creek, uh, Woodland Hills High School, Wilkins, and as well as Edgewood because we got some funding to bring larger trees into the school. So some of you may have noticed the trees we planted at Woodland Hills were smaller containerized trees and those are a little bit challenging to care for. So we got funding through the Pittsburgh, um, the Pittsburgh, the hockey team. Oh. Penguins, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so for every goal that they score, we're able to get a tree. So through that, we're able to bring larger trees into this in the school district. And then additionally, we got funding through the Arbor Day Foundation, which will allow us to plant uh, more trees in the district. And this has been an amazing collaboration with the teachers. So that's what we have lined up this season. I just wanted to also show you a bit of the mapping to show you where the trees will go. So that map that you see is for the high school. Uh, we have about 17 trees coming in. I will be working with about 10 high school students, and most of them are from the climate action team that's been very uh, supportive and working with Communitopia to really get this moving. Um, we may be getting support from volunteers who will help us actually dig the holes because these are larger trees, and we're estimating we'll need about 20 of them. So I'm working with the school principals directly and with Mr. Finney to make sure everything is appropriate. So that's Woodland Hills. Then Dixon Steam, we're going to bring 13 fruit trees, um, and we're working with a wonderful teacher there, uh, Mr. Tim Howenstein, who has actually been caring for the trees we planted last year with his students. So it's been such an incredible experience seeing the school engage with the trees even after we've planted them, and the students really enjoying those plantings. Then uh, we're also going to be planting 11 uh, trees at Wilkins steam along the, the, the field and in the front of the school, some flowering trees, really to bring some beauty and shade to the field for parents when people come to the field. Um, then Churchill, yeah, the Churchill Valley Greenway, some of you may know that used to be a golf course that is now been, it's now a large, a greenway pro, uh, space, so we can really use that as an outdoor classroom and education experience. So I've been working closely with uh, Miss Kathy Pearson at um, Turtle Creek and also Miss Margo at the high school. We are planning to bring students there to plant trees on the 14th of April. 
It's gonna be amazing. If you wanna stop by, you can. We, ap we appreciate you coming through. But you know, they'll get their hands dirty and work together to really you know, get them exposed and do something with the anxiety that most of the youth feel around climate change and just feeling like, okay, what can we do to, to be part of this solution? This really helps them to tangibly be part of that solution. Uh, lastly, we're gonna replace one tree at Turtle Creek that did not make it. Um, but I love Turtle Creek, so we're gonna bring a tree back to them. And I just wanted to really shout out Ms. Kathy Pearson, specifically her students have been just incredible. When we did the planting last year, they actually did an interview of the Tree Pittsburgh staff and then ended up doing a newsletter for us. Later in the year, she sent me these photos of them putting the, you know, the benefits of each tree that they planted and you know, really excited, and then I was so surprised that they did this in February. <laughs> they were looking, talking about their climate heroes, and they drew me. I'm like, who are these amazing? <laughs> <laughs> so then not only are they like loving the trees, they're also artists, and they made a wonderful report. So it's been really rewarding to see how far-reaching this program is, and I just really want to thank the district for your support, and Mr. Finney for really making sure we continue to finish uh, the work that we started. So thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. That's it for presentations. Registered speakers. Elizabeth Del Torre. Ms. Del Torre, is she online? Kanisha McClellan. Okay, uh, there are two voting items tonight, so for the board, um, I would like to skip down uh, and go out of order to 12-1. So there'll be two roll call voting items we'll take separately, 12-1 and 14-1. Uh, both of these uh, we need approved uh, tonight. So 12-1, the library. Ms. Regan, you want to explain that one? Um, it is because the library is funded through um, grant money through the state and federal government, she uh, being Dr. Kate, we all love Dr. Kate, um, Every year she has to do a report and send it in by the end of March and she um, is asking that we approve her her report tonight because next week she she has to send it in and then wait till they accept it and these things so it, that's basically what it is it's just her yearly report of how it's going with the Carnegie Library of Swissville and how the funding is spent okay so for dr. Kate this is for you uh, <laughs> we need a motion and a second so moved Second. Any questions? Ms. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Belmont? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. Clanagan Bay? Yes. Dr. McMillan? Yes. Mr. Renslin? Yes. Mrs. Arthrail? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, then skip down to 14.1 of the school finance. And I'm going to hand it back over to Ms. Regan again. So these are the annual um, assessed value up against the sales price of people who have moved into the district and uh, based on criteria that the board has set in the CLR of 63.6, .6, um, we, we ask for um, assessed values to be challenged. And this is the list that uh, Sue in the business office, she does this for us and she, she does all of the residential. Uh, Mr. Lacunas does the commercial and it's based on a certain percentage if a sale price is a certain percentage higher than the assessed value. We ask for a reassessment. And then every homeowner here gets a chance to then appeal that and then it goes through the appellate process. So this is just the beginning of, of that yearly um, process. And this is also, she's asking tonight, Sue is asking this for this tonight because the, it also has to be there by March 31st. They can have, um, 
you know, challenges or whatever, getting getting it in the proper format and sending it to the assess like we should send it back to the assessors in the Allegheny County by March thirty first. So that's why she asked to have it tonight. Okay, so we need a motion and a second to approve uh fourteen one. So moved. Second. Any questions? Go ahead, Ms. Lawson. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Belmont? Yes. Ms. Reed? Um, I'm going to have to say no because I have, I, I don't even know exactly what type of questions to ask about this. So I'll say no. Okay. Mr. Clanagan Bay? Yes. Dr. McMillan? Yes. Mr. Rensland? Yes. Mrs. Orthrell? Um, if I am related to someone on this list, I need to abstain, don't I? No. I don't think no. Yeah. No? Okay, yes. <laughs> Mr. Scott. Yes. <laughs> Motion passed. Okay. So, uh, 2 1, we seek a motion. We will be seeking a motion to approve all of the March 15th, 2023 agenda items by consent. So moved. No. Yeah, we don't. Have, no, not yet. We're not voting on any other Why items tonight. Because <laughs> I, I get everybody wrong. Yeah. So um, everything else now will be discussion items that we will be voting on next week. So two two will be um, having a second reading of the revised uh, policy two eighteen student discipline. Um, we will, two three will we, we will be seeking a motion to accept the uh, Jules settlement agreement. Um, offer in the amount of fifty thousand dollars. I have a question. After yeah. the lawyers and everything, will it amount to anything? No, that's well, that's, that's what we're getting. It. That's it. Yeah, that's our piece of it. So this, I didn't, I wasn't here when this was initiated. This was before me, but there were several school districts named in this, um, and that's that's our settlement. That's what we're accepting. Yay. Two four. We will be seeking a motion to approve the proposed AIU program of services budget for the 2023-24 school year in the amount of $2,235,963. Two five, we will be seeking a motion to accept the settlement for a student on behalf of Steele Schneider. Two six, in coordination with the Coalition Against Violence, we seek a motion to approve a trip to Harrisburg for administrators and students to attend the March of Our Lives Advocacy Day on March 23rd, 2023. The only cost I anticipate here would be for our buses. This is something the bus company has done every year. Um, I'm trying to get them donated. I don't know if they're going to donate them or not, but we will likely need two buses that day, maybe three. We have 90 students signed up so far that want to attend, so it's great. I offered our assistance to Clareton and Wilkinsburg because they are much smaller, and I thought we could share our buses with them um, as a kind of a give to some of our local schools, um, and then maybe some release time for some administrators. So the only cost might be the buses, but that's it. So we're all the way down to personnel. personnel. Six point one personnel. Section A authorization for leaves. Section B authorization for retirement and resignations. Section D authorizations to hire non professional staff. Section F authorization for EDR mentor actions. And Section G authorization for miscellaneous. Any discussion for personnel will require an, an executive session. Is there a need to go into that? Thank you. Buildings and grounds. Good evening, everyone. 10.1, we seek approval to permit the use of the Woodland Hill School District facilities for the stated events. Any questions on any of the events? 10.2, we're seeking permission to award the RFP for the replacing 
of the Siemens controls to automated logic contracting services in the amount for $372,000. And again, that would be for the elementary schools and for here at the administration office. And they were the only, uh, the only bidders as well. So nobody else bid on, on the job. Any questions? Real quick, Mr. Finney, what is Durga Puja? I'm sorry? What is Durga Puja? Is the it the use of facilities? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. on the use of facilities? Yeah. Durga Puja. I don't see where I... October Under 21st. Under Men of Valor. See, it says organization Men of Valor, which that's all understood at all, except Durga Puja. <coughs> I don't see it. It's the second one down on the, on the list of people Durga asking. Durga Puja is having an autumn festival. So it's, she's asking uh, if we know who that is. Is that an organization? Is that a person? Yeah, what is that about? Who are we, could, uh, we could certainly it, pull. It's an annual Hindu festival or originating in the Indian subcontinent. <laughs> Did you just Google what page yes, is that? Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> just as nice. I don't see it. What page? <laughs> Didn't you want it's to the know? first page yes. under, you, first of all, it's under, we're <laughs> <laughs> looking at the um, facilities usage. Oh, the facilities usage. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the, the controllers. That's a, yeah. I'm sorry. Pretty quick. <sighs> That's what I do. Amen. It's just a, uh, a, a two-day festival. It's yeah. yeah, it's a, it's for dancing and stuff of that nature. Okay, all day for twelve hours. From yeah. Cultural thing. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're willing. Just, to, they're willing just, to. They're willing to pay for it too. So not a problem. Just wanted to know what it was. Sorry, I was looking at number two. Ten yes, point you're two. You're good. <laughs> we have Doesn't a, need to know. Right. We have a, a really diaper. Thank you, Mr. Finney. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we go to 14th to the 14th. Yeah, school finance. Um, okay, 14.1 was already voted on. 14.2, 14.3, 14.4, 14.5 are the regular monthly bill list, the approval of the March bill list, the acceptance of the uh, February fund financial reports, and the investment report. Okay, down to 15. Uh, next week, I will be asking for approval for two items. First, uh, it's an MOU from Infinite Lifestyle Solutions. They presented this to us, a free eight-week um, program called Saving Our Sons and Daughters. It's all about trauma-informed uh, restorative circles. It is free to the district, so I didn't want to say no to that. Um, and they'll be working with our middle school and high school students after they meet with the principals and you approve this. Uh, the second, I'll be asking for a motion and a second to prove an, uh, approve an MOU between our district and the AIU for a trauma education response team. So what this is, is um, it's a QR code. It looks like this, okay? And what the police will do is with our, um, in conjunction with us and then the AIU's uh, trauma response team, this QR code, if they go to a home and they have an incident involving a child under the age of 18, they will hit this QR code and we all simultaneously will be notified of an issue going on with a child. And uh, wherever the child resides, uh, whatever district they attend, the local police get informed, the AIU response team gets informed. So it kind of puts everybody in action immediately. So um, it's a way for us to get, uh, they call them, Ms. Walsh calls them interrupters in place before there's a, a something else happens. So to me, it was a no-brainer. Um, it's the quicker we can get the information, the better, and it puts us all on the same page right away. So um, asking for those approvals next week. Any questions on 15-1 or 15-2? I want to say that it's nice to see something that addresses the daughters, the women. We've had a lot of programs come in here for the boys, but we need to attend to our girls, too. Yes, uh, you're 100% you're right. We have done a lot with outreach programs for at-risk males, 
and uh, recently we were able to secure the STEM education drone program for women in STEM, it's called, um, and then this will be the second one. And you're right, this is it's sons and daughters, but we are gearing it towards our, our female students. Do you have any old business? Seeing none. New business. Can I have a um, Are we public comment? Public comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Public comment, yes. Okay. Sorry. Anybody with their hand up online? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. The the amount is already in the email request. Oh. I don't know if you guys seen that. But if you guys wanted to raise it, I wouldn't mind that. But the amount is already in there. <laughs> thank you. I will. I will definitely review that and get that back out to the board. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Okay, can I have a motion in a second to adjourn? So moved. Second. 